Hello, today I'll be looking at this a very exciting new frame from Halo RC, but just before we get into that, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it, comment down below, please subscribe, and if you can find it, click on that little bell icon, it'll tell you when I'm uploading stuff. So yeah, this is the Guitar Pick. It's a new toothpick style frame from Halo RC, basically a team up between Bloods, who runs uh, Halo, and NJ Tech, one of my buddies from um, LDO, who is very into this size quad and wanted to design his own frame and he's collaborated with Bloods and they've come together and made this. It's called the Guitar Pick. If you didn't know, NJ is a professional guitar player and um, yeah, he's literally a rock star as his day job and he often doesn't show up to do our, our stream on LDO because he's off touring. And he plays with Kim Wilde a lot at the moment and they tour a lot. So yeah, it's not just Guitar Pick in the name. There are little shapes in here, which I'll show you in a second when we get to close up. So obviously we'll be doing a build here. The little kit you get is essentially for the frame, some TPU bits for the standoff and the camera mount, a uh, little couple of screws there. So we need to populate it with other stuff and I'll show you this in close up as well, but I've been keeping hold of these beta FPV. I've got a bunch of motors, and a flight controller, uh, and I've got this um, nameless VTX and DVR, which I think will go on quite nicely. So yeah, let's get into close up. We'll um, open this up, see what's in it, and I'll show you the rest of the bits I'm gonna put in it, and then I'll get on and build it. Okay, so let's get this little guy out the bag and see exactly what we've got here. I have to say, I like the packaging. It's uh, not very often you get things in an actual sort of retail looking thing. Uh, and I recognise this font a lot from Guitar Hero, the games on um, PlayStation, Xbox, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, opening up this piece of card, telling you what it is. So here's really the, the main thing, this is what we're talking about. This is the actual guitar pick frame and you can see in the centre all around you've got these little guitar pick shapes. One thing of interest you'll notice about this is the fact it's got two motor mounting holes. This is a, an interesting point of view from between uh, Bloods and NJ where one of the guys, I think Bloods likes sort of two and a half inch, NJ's more three inch. So it's like, well, why don't we have mounting holes for two types of uh, props? So two and a half inch go there, three inch go there. And then you've got plenty of prop clearance as well as, you know, you get a little bit more protection if you go back, I guess. But that is the frame itself. It is, I don't know how thick it is. I'll flash that up on the screen, just over here. Feels like it's about two mil. In the bag also some hardware mounting. We've got some long screws here and some nylons, I guess to take the stack all the way through. Uh, and it looks like you've got, when I mention it, you've got holes for mounting, what looks like the sort of standard toothpick or whoop board, which mounts sort of sideways, or this looks like a 16 mil mount if you've got the sort of traditional stack that way. Also in the box, little bits of uh, TPU. This is the, I think this is the riser um, to get like off the frame, uh, which is gonna go sort of like that and, and bring your components upwards. And then you've got this sort of standard TPU mount, which is gonna sit on top of everything and have the camera. Now, not included, but uh, there's various options for the TPU bits, so um, the guys kindly sent me a couple of extra bits just depending on what sort of camera I had. So if you check your camera out beforehand, there's a, there's an option to get the right TPU bit for you. We've got stickers. Got an NJ sticker. I don't know if I got an NJ sticker. I put that on my wing. A Halo sticker, another guitar bit card, and uh, a sort of thank you from, from Halo, which is nice. So the things I'm gonna put in here, well, uh, first off, I've just sort of hacked apart a few other quads just to get some bits. Uh, an XM Plus because, you know, we don't want to think about flying this with anything less than a half decent receiver. So yeah, I've been holding on for these for a while. Look, we're getting lots of reviews in one here. These are the Beta FPV uh, 1204 5000 KV motors, which are just coincidentally a lovely blue color, which uh, suits this blue. This wasn't by accident, by the way. Um, Blood asked me what color I, I had. Uh, or wanted, and uh, I said, oh, I've got these lovely blue motors, so blue and blue go together. Not quite decided what props I'm, I'm going on here yet, so I haven't figured out exactly where I'm gonna mount um, on the frame, but we'll sort that bit out soon. Uh, the next thing I've got is this, another new product. This is the Nameless RC D400 VTX and DVR. I thought it'd be quite nice getting a, a sort of all-in-one DVR, and it's one of these sort of 
shapes that particularly suits going into this sort of frame so we just sort of have the bit of the back so that's quite useful. I've got this little uh, Runcam Nano 2. Pretty nice cameras these and absolutely tiny so that's really gonna fit the business here and I think I think this is the right size for this TPU mount but if not it's definitely one of the others. Uh, and then we've got this other Beta FPV product which they're calling it's obviously not the HK115 carbon frame it's what you might put in it it's their new um, all-in-one 20 amp flight controller come ESC board uh, and it says on it layout by kebab FPV so thanks thanks Bob toothpick version and we've got solder points for all the motors instead of plugs which is quite nice and we've mostly got solder pads all the way around the outside I mean there are some interior pads on this hopefully we won't need to go anywhere near them I just want to stick on the outside which makes it easier and, and nicer to do but yeah hopefully this should come together pretty soon it's already got an XT30 on it um, I'm, I remember NJ saying uh, free s is the way to go on this even though this components would take for us so I mean first thing to do is build it up I, I'm still not sure about props so we'll get to that bit when we come to it but um, yeah let's get soldering up first and get the components together see how it fits and uh, we'll take it from there join me in a magical second where I'm either done or I'm halfway through and I want to show you something. So just before I get started, I want to mention a couple of things about the fitting of stuff. And one thing about this, which is quite interesting, because I looked at it and I thought, that's a bit big. The intention is that you actually cut these down, depending on how big you want it, and then the remainder can be cut again to use as uh, little flexible spaces. And because they're TPU, they will have a certain amount of squishiness and a certain amount of sort of dampering as well, which is quite cool. Also, as far as this little nameless, I think it's the D400 goes, uh, you get this cable with it, which I just wanted to mention, because you've got two options here. You can, on the DVR, record the OSD information or not record the OSD information. So I need to make some changes to cable, for example, in order not to record the DVR information of the DVR, but still have it. I have to join this one to video in. This, at the moment, loops from video in to video out. So I have to take that out and send it. Basically what happens is the video is going to come in here, go back out to the flight control on this blue board and then come back in with the OSD on this yellow cable. So at the moment there's a loop there. I have to go direct in there, break that loop and then solder these to the flight controller. Um, also, helpfully enough, although it would have been quite handy, I've got not the same join there. I wonder if I can swap that over because it would be quite handy just to be able to unplug these things. Finally, before I get going, on the flight controller, um, I really like the layout of this one. Well done to Kebab FPV because it all the soldering points around the side that are actually useful to it. And another thing which is quite well thought out, aside from the fact you've got the solder pads for the ESC connectors, in the little bag of stuff you also get these little connectors. And the idea being here, you can place it into these holes like so, solder those in and then you've got regular connectors you can plug the wires in. I think it's a bit neater soldering on but I'll, I'll have a think about it as I build up see where I am. Uh, the only thing I'm not sure about yet is exactly where I'm going to put this but I'll, I'll figure that out as I go. Anyway, I'll, I'll stop procrastinating and get on with the actual build now. Did you spot a jump cut? Yeah, it's all done. All done and dusted. So a couple of uh, small changes I made in in the build. I ended up using this type of canopy which was uh, NJ's suggestion is what he used and this is this little bit here to put the VTX antenna on um, and you can fit an XM Plus underneath there as well so that's kind of lying on the board. You've also got actually a space here which would uh, go on quite happily. So everything fits in quite nice and is quite neat looking so really pleased about that. Um, antenna wise at the moment I've just got these sort of on the arms. Obviously not perfect given that's you know carbon and, and it's not liked. I can always change this around but I'm figuring you know it's not long range we'll be okay there. So my only particular gripe putting this together was with the battery strap. Now it doesn't come with a battery strap so Bloods very kindly sent me this one over but I found that it's a little bit too thick. It's really difficult to thread through these holes but I am told they're going to use the Beta FPV straps which are a little bit thinner and that will really help get it in there. But um, if you've got a regular strap, 
before you build it it's worth getting that through because it's it's a, a right pain to to do this afterwards it was tweezers and pulling and, and stuff but that's that's all ready to go on this one I've got the outside mountings because I might change this up with different props all I had ready with some like 31 something two bladed props and these are the two and a half inch uh, Emacs Avon props which I really like so I'm gonna test it with this one and uh, yeah we're we're bound up uh, we're ready to go I'll, I'll give a, a quick view here of what I did in beta flight which wasn't much okay so here we are in beta flight and there's not an awful lot to see here as per usual whenever I start flying something um, I like to try it out in this very much default setting so you will notice that we are running beta flight 356 because it's what came with the flight controller so I wanted to see this flight controller without sort of updating it and, and bits like that so ports wise um, we've got serial X set for your 2 for my XM plus and the nameless D400 speaks IC tramp so we've got that set up configuration I've activated motor stop we've got an 8k 8k loop we've got the maximum arming angle at 180 slight uh, personalization of the craft in there and as mentioned we've set serial RX and S bus um, I always have my air mode off here by default because I like it on a switch and I've got my uh, beacon type of beeper set up. Pids wise I didn't touch them the only thing I touched here was the rate settings where I'm using the 0 0.8 on everything just as my standard thing. Receiver I set up and we've got RSSI flashed on this particular one and that's set on AUX12. I put my modes, these are pretty standard if you've ever seen them in my builds before. Um, arm angle horizon, although I don't know what bother with horizon. Uh, beeper air mode and uh, turtle mode is all we need. And then the OSD, again if you've seen it in my builds this will be quite familiar. I like to spread things out around the side and have the sort of warning messages in the middle. The only thing I changed which slightly out of the ordinary was to flash JESC uh, 24 kilohertz version on the ESCs. I haven't done RPM filtering obviously because we're not on 4.1 uh, but that was a suggestion again from NJ to uh, improve things on those motors. With that done let's go and fly this. Well on quite a bizarre turn up for the books it's not raining it's still pretty cold about seven degrees celsius but hey beggars can't be choosers so out to try the little toothpick see how this does try not to land it in the mud uh gonna try a few batteries out the recommended thing for this is something like a 453s it's a little tattoo but i've only got one of them i've got a couple of these 454s's which may be overkill and then my next one up is like the 650 which is probably a bit big so we'll see how it goes so we're off on the maiden flight and I'm actually using the bigger 650 milliamp hour 3S here. The reason being is I only had one of the 450s which I thought was going to be the batteries to use. So I thought I'll put the 650 on, I'll give it a hover, make sure everything's okay and I'll give it the first sort of test flight just to make sure we've got no problems before I go with a decent battery. And there are a, a little couple of problems here. Um, I mean the quad gets in the air fine and it feels nicely manoeuvrable, feels pretty smooth but I'm having problems with this camera. It looks all a bit darker than it should do. And I've used the Nano 2 before and it's a pretty decent camera. So I'm thinking, is it because I'm pushing the signal into that D400 and it's recording that and then pushing the signal back out to the flight controller for it to put the OSD on and then it's going back into the D400 to give me the um, actual picture that I see in the goggles and we can have a look here at what the D400 actually records which to me looks a lot more like the conditions of the day it's just that little bit lighter uh, and you can just see a little bit more detail there I mean obviously we haven't got any noise and we're only using 25 milliwatts and I've had these nameless brands before and the the low end of the power on the VTX does tend to be a bit bad and just so you can see the difference here I've put the goggle recording on the bottom right and we can see the DVR recording from the actual D400 on the left and I can certainly see there's there's a difference there in darkness it certainly felt like it on the day anyway anyway in terms of the flying it felt pretty good it felt a little bit heavy because I was using a heavy battery so let's bring this down and let's take out the 450 milliamp 3s which is really what it's designed to fly with Okay, so here we go with the 450 milliamp hour battery, and I've put.
put the VTX power up to 200 milliwatts and even on this I'm still getting a, a sort of scrappy image here and it's overly dark and I don't particularly like it uh, and I can only think it's because the way the signal's going in and being processed before it comes out. Let me um, overlay this smaller DVR image on the D400 DVR again. And I've got to say, there is an absolute world of difference between these two LiPos. I bought the 4S batteries with me thinking, I'll give them a go because they might need it. But as soon as I went to the 453S, the power to weight ratio changed completely. This thing really did come alive. So this is absolutely the best battery to use. Um, it's only my pure shame that I only had the one, so I couldn't really do much else with it. Now, as far as the picture goes here, we are getting some jello, you'll notice. Mostly in the recorded image, I didn't notice much in my DVR. I could see there was a bit there. What I'm going to have to do is go back and look at how, basically how tightly I've got the bolts that are holding the TPU mount on with the camera, because too tight and the vibrations from the props will sort of go through and make uh, the camera move around because that TPU is flexible so you have to sort of experiment around with it but I want to go back and, and change some stuff out anyway for next time so I, I was going to leave it till I did all that then but um, yeah I mean really like this as soon as I had the right battery um, because the power and purely the agility of this thing is uh, absolutely amazing uh, we, we say it lots of times about um, how a small quad can feel like a big quad and uh, you know you can't really say it's like a five inch because a it's too agile first off and and b it's not really like that but what i found with it is even in a large field like this i wasn't thinking you know this is a small quad it's not going fast enough it was just zooming along and because I thought definitely I'm going to have to try 4S here, but I, I really didn't need it. This 3S on this 450 is great. And I kind of looked at the agility here by trying to follow this seagull. And normally, you know, birds are pretty agile. They will get out of the way easily. And this thing just nailed this seagull every time. It was not a problem to find it. So a, a real situation of uh, everything working quite nicely together. That said, of course, I need to improve the, the picture we're getting here. Either I'm going to have to cut the D400 out completely, or I might have to think about how we are getting that DVR picture recorded, because I'm not really happy with what we've got going on there. But yeah, precious little flying. I did go out and I did another flight on a 650, but it really wasn't the same. This, this has a particular window of battery sizes and the 450 is so spot on for it flying it with anything else afterward just feels wrong so i bought it down for the rest of the day well flying days are preciously scarce at the moment so i wanted to go out and do more immediately before i made this but i'm just about to go away it's blowing gales outside so i'm gonna come and do part two where i'm basically if part one was like here's the default kit then part two is like i'm trying to fix everything and upgrade everything to see what happens so um my plans are go three inch on the props go to beta flight 4.1 and try the rpm filtering and do something with that VTX. As far as the frame goes, I really do like it really strong for such a, a little toothpick. It, it would be so hard to break this. Um, it's actually cut by Armington as well, which are a pretty high standard uh, manufacturer. Um, and it's just turned out really nice, very flexible in, in what you can do. And I really love the way the, the, the build goes together. It's so low profile. These little TPU bits that you can cut and decide how high you want things is, is quite a good idea. Um, I was also really happy with that Betaflight um, F4 board, their toothpick board. Really, really easy to work with. Um, and what I mean by that is, aside from the fact that all the solder points were nicely on the outside, so that's nice and easy to reach for your soldering iron, solder went on there really easily. I've got some balls before and I'm there and I'm putting heat on and I'm putting solder on and nothing's happening. This went together really nice and easily. And we've still got space under there to do something. Um, hand in hand with these nice 1204 motors, which again went on very neatly. I uh, got a hint from NJ about this uh, this little sort of tie stuff I used to secure the, the motor wires down. It's called Tessa Tape. Really useful stuff actually. I'm going to use that a lot now. Obviously the thing that was going wrong for me seemed to be that uh, DVR slash VTX which just didn't seem to get a decent picture. Now I'm going to give it one more chance because I want to do a bunch of upgrades and see what I can do because I'm prepared to live with a slightly darker picture 
um, if I get DVR, but should that not work out nicely in the next one, then waiting in the wings, I've got this little uh, Rush FPV tiny tank, which I know uh, are always really clean. And of course, I need to order some more 450 milliamp hour free S batteries because that was just perfect. So this has been the Halo RC toothpick frame. Uh, with designs from Bloods and NJ. So I have to thank them very much for sending me this over. And of course, thanks as well to BDFPV who supplied the flight controller and the motors and Nameless RC that supplied the DVR. Not so sure about that one. And some quad I had over there that I stole the camera from. Join me when we come back and fly some more. We have a different setup and see how that goes. In the meantime, I hope that's been helpful and I'll catch you next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.